there's a game based on Cloak and Dagger? Really? What you mean the teenagers from the Spider-Man comic who have the powers related to darkness and light? Them, they got a game that early, in 1983. That doesn't seem right at all. They're pretty minor characters to get a game that early. And yeah, I know they had that TV series in 2018, but they've always been like Z-tier Marvel. Wait, this isn't about Marvel's Cloak and Dagger at all, is it? There's only one of them for a start, and he seems to be all dressed as a spy. Oh, wait a minute, spies, maybe... It's the other Cloak and Dagger, silly me. Cloak and Dagger was a World War II set spy movie made in 1946, directed by Fritz Lang and starring Gary Cooper. It's a bit strange of Atari to commission a game based on a very moderately successful film made 37 years beforehand. I, but wait, where are the Nazis? What? Why are there robots? This doesn't make any sense. Hitler didn't have robots, did he? Hmm, maybe I got the history books wrong. Maybe Wolfenstein was right. No, wait, there's another cloak and dagger. And now this terrible intro is out of the way, we can talk about that instead because this is clearly the right game. And how do we know this? Because it's in the goddamn movie itself. Whoa, what's all this about? Well, Cloak and Dagger is a 1984 Universal Pictures spy caper that follows 11-year-old Davy. Davy's mother has passed away and his father is perma-busy working for the military as an air traffic controller. Poor old Davy, all lonely in that, has ended up addicted to an Atari game called Cloak and Dagger. Ooh, the mystery already. Davy and his friend Kim go on an errand for the local video game shop owner, whereupon they witness the death of a spy who, as he carks it, just so happens to be holding an Atari cartridge of Cloak and Dagger that holds all sorts of governmental secrets. And he asks Davy and Kim to take it to the FBI. As is the nature of 80s movies, the authorities don't believe that there are military secrets on this cartridge. Those silly 80s authorities, they'll get themselves in all kinds of trouble. Kim gets kidnapped by the sinister Dr. Rice and his cadre of spy shits, and so it is up to Davy to save the day. Emboldened by an imaginary representation of the Cloak and Dagger Games hero, Agent X, aka Jack Flack. Think of Jack Flack in this game as a sort of drop dead Fred type character, only instead of farting and doing Rick Maley things, he gives Davy all sorts of James Bond esque advice. Jack Flack is imagined by Davy as being a sort of a more macho version of his father. There's some issues there, isn't there? Cloak and Dagger starred Henry Thomas, who played Elliot in E.T. Atari sure loved a bit of Henry Thomas's oeuvre in the early 80s, didn't they? Well, they did for a bit until they had to bury those cartridges. Jack Flack, Davy's dad, is played by a character actor, Daubney Coleman, who at 91 years old still continues to work. Daubney's been in a fair few big movies too, mainly in smaller roles, but he's probably best known for being the sexist boss from 9 to 5. As in, yes, the song. He never gave Dolly Parton credit, and it's enough to drive her crazy if she let it. Cloak and Dagger was released at a time when video games were seen as a sort of a muse for movies at the time. Movies like Tron, War Games, The Last Starfighter and this were seen as exciting opportunities for ideas for Hollywood at the time. And indeed, this movie was presented as a double bill with The Last Starfighter in cinemas on its initial release in June 1984. It did reasonable numbers when it was released with Last Starfighter, but ended up doing an awful lot worse when it was released on its own in August of the same year, pulling in a mere $10 million return from its standalone national release. It has a Rotten Tomato score of 67% based on 12 reviews from the critics and 56% based on audience reviews. It's all right. 
As you can probably tell from the storyline, the Cloak and Dagger game has quite a large part to play in Cloak and Dagger the movie. And you're here to see what this is all about. And I'm here to tell you those answers. Otherwise, we might as well just stop now. The movie features multiple shots of Henry Thomas holding a Cloak and Dagger Atari 5200 cart and indeed playing it. However, there was no Atari 5200 game based on Cloak and Dagger actually released. So was the game just made up for the movie, like its cinematic stable mate, The Last Starfighter? No, a game did indeed emerge in the arcade, and it's here where the intrigue kicks in. The character of Davy is in fact playing the arcade version of Cloak and Dagger, according to a post to a 1995 message board, which is rec.games.video.classic. Such a memorable name for a message board. The post was made by a colleague of the programmer of the abandoned Atari 8-bit version of Cloak & Dagger, which was ditched when Atari's owner, Warner Communication, sold up to Commodore founder Jack Tremell. Given the butt falling out of the US games market, Tremel wanted the focus of Atari to be away from home video games to concentrate on the computer market. And to be fair to Tremel, he knew how to launch a computer. The 5200 version of Cloak & Dagger was going to be an adapted version of these 8-bit computer versions of Cloak & Dagger with the controls refigured so they worked with the 5200's controller. However, even the 8-bit computer versions of Cloak & Dagger never came out. So which game is in the movie? Well, it is the arcade version of Cloak & Dagger. It's all Hollywood magic, you see. It's pretty unlikely that the 5200 version would have been as graphically sharp had it had been released. And the arcade version of Cloak & Dagger was nearly finished at the point that this movie was made. So what they did was they took the coin-up version and when you see Henry Thomas playing the game, I'm saying playing in inverted commas because he wasn't playing it at all. The game had been played by Atari software developer Russell Dorr and then the footage shown on the screen of the 5200 connected television was just them piping in footage from the coin up that Russell Dorr was playing. It's all smoke and mirrors with these Hollywood Moogle clowns. The reason the Cloak & Dagger arcade game was nearly finished because it had already been very far in development by the time that Universal Pictures got in contact with Atari. The game was slated to be a Robotron conversion kit called Agent X and uses that game's twin stick controls. They rejigged the graphics a little bit, renamed the game from Agent X to Cloak & Dagger and here we are. So how does the Cloak & Dagger arcade game play? It's pretty decent fun. You are Agent X trying to make your way through Dr. Boom's underground lair, searching for some secret plans. Oh, it's just like the movie, isn't it? There are lifts on each side of the floor and you need to get from one side of the floor to the other while numerous traps and security robots get in the way. Dr. Boom doesn't seem to be too smart to me. Why don't you just have lifts that go all the way up and down? Having lifts that go directly up one floor must be really expensive. Earlier levels are pretty straightforward. You can get from A to B very swiftly. And that is something you will need to do as each level features a big old bomb in the middle that ignites and threatens to incinerate the good agent's moustache. If you're feeling cocky, you can ignite it yourself on your way to the other side of the fortress for bonus points. The further you go, the more traps there are, in particular landmines that are planted, and you can find yourself needing a resurrected Princess Diana, what with her work to do with landmine recovery charities, to cry to about your severed limbs. These flash as yellow crosses, which is usually enough info, but during a pitched firefight, you can be forgiven for not noting where you put your feet on the floor. So to make this easier, landmine plans can be collected that will give you a handy set of floor arrows. I can't help but think that Princess Diana 
at the height of her sorting out all these landmine issues, should have just handed out these plans and there may have been a few children with more feet in Africa. Once you've gotten the super important secret plans, not the landmine ones, on the bottommost floor, you've then got to take them all the way back out of this secret layer. And it looks like they've rather swiftly cleaned up each bomb ruined floor and indeed up the security, as the game continues to be more difficult as you go. Although it's a nice touch that they put a large crater in the places where bombs were exploded in the game. As it was a conversion kit from Robotron, the controls were very similar, using one joystick for shooting and one for moving around Agent X. There aren't the insane level of enemies on screen as there are in Robotron, but to be fair, this is due to the fact that there are more detailed environments and the level of traps and landmines more than make up for that. In between each floor, you get some comedic cutscenes featuring Agent X going in between floors, which are nicely animated and sort of fairly amusing, I guess. The game is pretty good fun, probably not as good as the software it replaced in Robotron, but I wouldn't have been too upset to have seen this in the cabinet instead. It's pretty unique to play what is less a game adaption of a movie for me, but more of a companion piece. I mean, it's in the film itself. So what is this and Super Mario Brothers 3 from The Wizard in terms of game companion pieces instead of movie adaptions? And just like The Wizard, the game is a bit better than the movie, in all honesty. CMVG gave it a column in their issue 32 with no score, uh, but seemed to like it by admiring its graphical style, particularly the interfloor animations, and they also said it's pretty easy to master the controls. So, Atari, when are we going to get video games based on Legends of the Fall, Suicide Kings, 1114 and 2002 romantic comedy I'm With Lucy, seeing as you love Henry Thomas's work so much? Probably best not to do Gerald's game though. If you've seen Gerald's game, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like, subscribe and K thanks bye.